A Lesson from the Martyrdom of Joseph Smith by Hiram Andrus Joseph Smith turned his steps toward Carthage and martyrdom with the sad comment, If my life is of no value to my friends, it is of none to myself. Before making the fateful decision to go to Carthage, the prophet received a revelation directing him in the course he should take to preserve his life. But the saints at Nauvoo failed to sustain him in that action, so he set his face resolutely toward Carthage with the repeated declaration, I am going like a lamb to the slaughter. Years later, Brigham Young spoke to the saints in Salt Lake City about the prophet's decision. If Brother Joseph Smith had been led by the spirit he had, he would never have given himself up and gone to Carthage, he explained, but he would have gone right to these mountains and would have been alive today to lead this people. The lesson the saints should have learned from the prophet's death, President Young stressed, was that the sheep must follow the shepherd, not the shepherd follow the sheep. As early as the day the church was organized, the Lord impressed upon the saints the fact that they had an obligation to sustain and behold the prophet, seer, and revelator of the church. Wherefore, meaning the church, thou shalt give heed unto all his words and commandments, which he shall give unto you, as he receiveth them, walking in all holiness before me. For his words ye shall receive, as if from mine own mouth, in all patience and faith. The Lord later made clear this obligation on two separate occasions. Great blessings were promised to the saints if they would uphold God's prophet and sustain this divine order. By doing these things, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you, the Lord explained. Yea, and the Lord God will disperse the powers of darkness from before you and cause the heavens to shake for your good and his name's glory. Again the Lord declared, Inasmuch as ye do this, glory shall be added to the kingdom which ye have received. Inasmuch as ye do it not, it shall be taken, even that which ye have received. But the saints at Nauvoo failed to learn this lesson and be as attentive to its obligations as they should have been. Their failure cost the prophet Joseph Smith his life. The questions are sometimes discussed, Did Joseph Smith have to die? If so, did he have to seal his testimony at the time he did? Many great prophets of the past have not had to seal their testimony with their life's blood, including Adam, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Nephi, Alma, and others. However, Joseph Smith stood as a unique figure among the prophets by virtue of his calling at the head of the dispensation of the fullness of times, a dispensation in which he stood as a witness to the world and in which the purposes of God for the whole human family must be consummated. His testimony was largely rejected by the people of his day, and for this reason it was written that he, like several of the Lord's anointed in ancient times, sealed his mission and his words with his own blood. But evidence indicates that Joseph Smith did not necessarily have to die when he did. A major reason why he was martyred June 27, 1844, was because many of the saints did not sustain him in his prophetic calling, as they should have done. They did not fulfill their responsibility to him as the Lord's prophet on earth. Stephen Markham was one of the prophet's trusted friends and was closely associated with Joseph in the period before the martyrdom. I asked him how this thing was going to come out, Markham later reported. He replied, If the brethren would let him manage the business, there should be no bloodshed. But if not, it would be the hardest blow the church ever had or would receive, that if he or Hiram were ever taken again, they would be massacred, or he was not a prophet of God. When the events which led to the prophet's death began to press heavily upon him, he contemplated the alternatives that lay before him. His countenance brightened as the inspiration of God illuminated his mind. The way is opened, he declared. It is clear to my mind what to do. All they want is Hiram and myself. Then tell everybody to go about their business, and not to collect in groups, but to scatter about. There is no doubt they will come here and search for us. Let them search. They will not harm you in person or property, and not even a hair of your head. We will cross the river tonight, and go away to the west. 
The prophet's intention was to organize an exploring expedition to go to the west and find a location for the saints to settle. Then return to Nauvoo after the prevailing emotions and feelings had settled down somewhat. With the emotional tensions which then existed, he could, he could meet the legal charges which were being made against him when, as mayor of Nauvoo, he ordered the, the destruction of the libelous press, the Nauvoo ex Expositor. But many of the saints, lacking insight, inspiration, and confidence in this prophet, failed to sustain him in this course, even though Hiram informed them of the revelations of God to his brother, saying, The Lord has warned him to flee to the Rocky Mountains to save his life. Joseph began immediately to carry out the Lord's instructions to him. About two o'clock in the morning of June 23rd, he, Hiram, and Willard Richards were rowed across the Mississippi River, by Orrin Porter Rockwell to Montrose, where they went to the home of William Jordan and began preparing for their journey to the west, while Brother Rockwell returned to Nauvoo for horses to make the trip. Meanwhile, a constable and his party arrived in Nauvoo to arrest Joseph and Hiram. Not finding them, the constable went to Carthage, leaving the threat that the governor would send troops to Nauvoo and wait three years if necessary to arrest the prophet. Many of the saints became frightened, they wanted to get a council formed and send a committee to invite Joseph back, Stephen Markham reported. They said it was a viable case, and there was no danger, as they would bail him to any amount they might ask. They said it would break up the place, Nauvoo, and lessen the prop value of property. Also ruin a number of men financially for Joseph to leave. Their interest in monetary matters and in their own personal affairs blinded them from seeing that the mob only wanted to get Joseph to Carthage, where they would deal with him in their own way, not according to the processes of law. Accordingly, a committee was sent to entreat Joseph to return and give himself up. Rockwell was sent with them to show them where the prophet was staying. Upon finding the prophet and his brother, members of the committee accused Joseph of cowardice for wishing to leave the people adding that their property would be, be destroyed, and they left without the house or, or hams. This base accusation cut Joseph to the depths of his sensitive soul, and it was then that he replied, If my life is of no value to my friends, it is none to myself. What can a prophet do when circumstances place him in a position of choosing between following the light of truth and revelation which opens the vision of the future, or yielding to the fears and accusations of his friends? What can he do when, under such circumstances, his own life hangs in the balance? Turning to Rockwell, who had observed the fears which the saints had expressed at Nauvoo, Joseph asked, What shall I do? Rockwell replied, You are the oldest and ought to know best, and as you make your bed, I will lie with you. Joseph turned to Hiram and said, Brother Hiram, you are the oldest. What shall we do? Hiram replied, Let us go back and give ourselves up and see the thing out. After studying a few moments, Joseph said, If you go back, I will go with you, but we shall be butchered. Hiram said, No, no, let us go back and put our trust in God, and we shall not be harmed. The Lord is in it. If we live or have to die, we will be reconciled to our fate. With this, the prophet returned to Nauvoo and then went to Carthage. On the way to Carthage, he met Stephen Markham, who had been sent away earlier on business for the brethren. He told me about the committee going to him in Iowa, saying that he had always said he would stand by them until death. But now the wolf had come. He left the flock for, for them to be destroyed, Markham related. He remarked, I could not stand such language as that and said, If the people do not want me to live for their sakes, I do not want to live for my own. Having started for Carthage, the prophet returned to Nauvoo for a short time to see that the state arms which the Nauvoo Legion had were peacefully delivered up to an emissary from the governor. While the arms were being delivered up, General Smith, in advising Colonel Scott to give up the cannon, said that he had gone away by the counsel of the Spirit of the Lord. But, the prophet continued, I have been forced back by the brethren. On the fateful day of June 27th, Stephen Markham was sitting with the prophet on the bed in the Carthage jail. I wish you would tell, 
I wish you would tell me how this fuss is going to come out, as you have at other times beforehand. Joseph's devoted friend remarked, Markham had been with the prophet when he was incarcerated in Missouri, and when he attempted, when an attempt was made at Dixon, Illinois, to take Joseph to Missouri. During the night of April 11, 1839, the visions of the future were opened to Joseph, and he saw the ways and means of his escape from his enemies in Missouri, and the danger his beloved brother Markham was in. He then awakened Markham and instructed him how to make his escape, which he did. Now the prophet's valiant friend was asking him to do the same in the difficulties at Carthage. The prophet replied, Brother Markham, the Lord placed me to govern his kingdom on the earth, but the people have taken away from me the reins of government by the committee which was sent across the river to get him to return and give himself up, making the statements they did concerning me leaving the flock. I gave way to them, and the whisperings of the Spirit left me, and I am now no more than a common man, and I can do nothing for myself except they place me back to my former position, and if they do not do it, I am gone. Another report of this conversation states, On the 27th June, Colonel Markham asked uh, Colonel Smith if he could not tell by the Spirit, as he did at Dixon, how he would come out, to which he said, I have adhered to the brethren and gone contrary to the counsel of the Spirit, and I am now no more than another man. I can do nothing for myself. If there is anything done, the brethren have got to do it. After the death of Joseph Smith and Hiram, Brigham Young, who had ascertained the facts leading up to the martyrdom, spoke to the people of the death of the prophet. Joseph so loved this people that he gave his life for them, he exclaimed. You did not know it until after his death. He has now sealed his testimony with his blood. Continuing, President Young said, If the twelve had been here, we would not have seen him given up. He should not have given him give him up. He had been taken away, for the people are not worthy of him. Apparently, President Young had heard and accepted the testimony of Stephen Markham, and possibly of others, concerning Joseph going to Carthage contrary to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, for on Sunday, March 21st, 1858, he spoke to the saints in Salt Lake City regarding the prophet Joseph Smith, that if he had followed the revelations given to him, he would be here in our midst this day. But he hearkened to some of our first elders who treated or accused him of cowardice, etc. President Young continued, and as soon as this was done to him, his noble soul could not bear it. Hence, he said he would come and die as a lamb by the slaughter, innocent. And as soon as he crossed back, he lost his power. By studying the facts of history, men may acquire the wisdom of the past and profit from the mistakes of those who have lived before their time. The Lord's admonition for the saints to give heed to the inspiration which he gives to his living prophet is as real today as it was in the time of Joseph Smith, and the alternatives are still before the saints to which the Lord referred when he said, And as much as you do this, or give heed to the words of the living prophets, glory shall be added to the kingdom which ye have received, and as much as ye do it not, it shall be taken, even that which ye have received. Today is a time of increasing challenge and conflict for the saints. They should think seriously of their obligation to give diligent heed to the words of God's living prophet. If you like the video and think that others might like it too, please hit the thumbs up so that YouTube knows to show it to other people.